Welcome to one of the first webinars on developing your research problem and your purpose and all the statements that make up kind of an introduction to a literature review. SK2 is about a literature review and literature reviews start with a problem, problem statement, a purpose statement. This all starts before you begin your research question and as you see I kind of have a three titles on this but the end of it is preparing your argument. So think of yourself as doing just that. You're preparing your argument for what you're going to um, discuss in the literature review, the end all goal of SK2. So let's look at some definitions first. Research problem, Hauser states, it's the statements of disparity between what you know and what needs to be known. And we discover this through investigation of a literature review. So you develop a research problem statement, and this is generally going to be your big purpose, is that you're defining what we know, and then you can say, thus, we, this is what we don't know yet. Then you move into a research purpose. So you say, since we don't know this about the problem, here's the purpose of this study, and it's your description of the direction of your inquiry. And uh, before I begin, I want to tell you that I am using Hauser as a text. Tappen is our text, and I love Tappen, Janet Tappen. And um, I also, is she Janet Tappen or is it Janet Hauser? Can't remember. It's Janet Hauser. Can't remember Tappen's first name. I like them both, but I purposefully did these, this webinar and the following webinars with Hauser just to give you a, a, a little bit broader view of how people, how nursing educators talk about nursing research and talk about specifically literature reviews here and preparing for a literature review. So the first thing we think about is our research problem. And I bet you have that in your head already. The problem is the why. You first start addressing the problem and really anybody would probably address it the problem the way you are. Most likely they're all going to see, you know, here's the problem with nursing education or here's the problem with caring for children with physical disabilities or here's the problem of blah blah blah. So really anybody would see this the way you see it. It's most likely um, a problem that is well known but you want to outline it and it's kind of your setting. Then you're going to outline your research perfect purpose and that's the what and that's when you just start to describe your personal goals of research. Both of these are not huge statements but they support each other. You want to look for clarity so that when someone's reading it they understand what your setting is and what your general intent is and that you want to look for support. So let's go into talking about just a research problem, the why. Hauser tells us these are declarations, they're gaps, they're disparities. What we know and what we don't know. It defines your area, your setting. It also gives a lot of importance of the problem so that your reader is intrigued by, okay, here's the problem. Here, I didn't realize it was this large or I didn't realize this many people were affected by this condition. Those are, and, and I didn't realize these were the consequences of this problem. Those are the kind of things you want to show to engage people so that they care about what you're writing on. And typically this is this is topic that is located in the beginning of the report, has your introduction. One little writing, power writing thought on this is that you really want to engage from the beginning. Lots of times we write kind of backwards and we, we write really broad and we don't you don't really know what our topic is until you get into the paragraph. Focus now with your first sentences just saying clearly, you know, a, a problem in nursing education lies in blah, blah, blah. Somehow start it right with your first sentences and then build to give it uh, why it's concerning, why it's important, what's the prevalence, what's the consequence. So here's an example. Uh, this is just a statement. It's not a, or it's, I guess it's two statements, two sentences. It's not a whole paragraph, but we would start saying families describe controlling the trajectory of their ch school age child's obesity, complicated by blah, blah, blah. And then we say while well, national standards have been set, helping children be active at home is less researched. So you can see in there, you know the setting. We're talking about, or we know the population. We're talking about school age children. We know the problem. 
obesity. We know some of the implications of it. We know that while national standards of physical activity are set, we don't know much about promoting activity at home. It's less researched and warrants investigation. So let's look at this. What's known is in red. What's known is, and I would have cited this had I had more room on a PowerPoint slide for you, but what is known is um, that school activities complicate physical activity, lack of safe neighborhoods, uh, busy home lives. So we know that. Uh, where is the disparity? Well, we have standards that say children should be active, but um, we don't necessarily help children be active at home. What are some gaps? You know, these kind of get redundant, but helping children be ac uh, active at home is less researched. So um, that was our problem. That kind of gives an overall problem. I still don't know from reading this what Brenda is going to research, though. So let's look at how the purpose statement builds us to kind of be more objective and clear. So you, the purpose statement more often brings in statements about what the methods of the study what might be, the variables, the specific population. You probably could pick up some of these things from the problem statements in your introduction, but now you're going to move to one further more declarative, objective, concise, clear step. Um, did I double click? No, I didn't. So before I go on, uh, introduction of the problem and the purpose is not the same as your research questions. And this webinar is not about research questions. But your research questions are going to be articulated and based off of these. So you, you want to just show this logical argument forming. You know, here's the problem. Here's my purpose. So let's move into a purpose statement. Um, in the text below that's all multicolored, I have a purpose statement. So let's say, and I'm sorry, I used a different topic instead of the childhood obesity. But in this purpose statement, the objective of this descriptive study, which is a method, was to compare the frequencies of bi-hourly turning. That was a variable under study. In critically ill tube-fed patients receiving mechanical ventilation, that's a population. In whom pneumonia, that's a variable did or did not develop for three consecutive days of data collection study. That's a method again. So you can see how this one sentence is giving a lot of knowledge to the reader saying, okay, you know, here's what Brenda's going to look at. Here's what she's going to do, a descriptive study. And I'll go into that. So here's what she's going to do, her methods. Descriptive study, data collection um, study. That's kind of repetitive and I I took this directly out of Hauser, so we really, I really could, would wordcraft this to come back and put data collection with descriptive. So I might say the, dis the objective of this descriptive study through data collection was to uh, compare. Uh, variables under study are great. So there's lots of variables we're going to collect in a study in the end, but our major outcome variables are going to be s to see how by hourly turning prevents pneumonia. So obviously we're going to have to measure those two things in various ways. Um, the population in the setting is implied in this one. I didn't have to say um, within an ICU. We might, we might do that later on when we get really specific in our methods. But right now it's implied. The population certainly stated and the setting of an ICU is implied. So now let's uh, move to one more thing here, a general discussion about unbiased versus biased research statements. Um, sometimes we're declarative in a way that's actually biased. We want to say this is going to, this study will be done to prove this. That's, that really has a bias. You're already saying you're going to prove it and it implies that all your methods will be to prove it. You're really exploring. That that gives you uh, more validity to say, we're going to look at this. We don't know what the outcomes are going to be. We're certainly going to control as much as we can in this study to get some accurate um, results. But we're, we're not going to be uh, really pushy on the, uh, on the bias kind of statements. This leads us, anytime readers kind of say, oh, they're going to prove this, so they're going to see it. If they're looking for it, they're going to see it, and they're going to prove it. That really 
lends readers to question the validity of your methods or your beliefs and were you really unbiased when you went into this. So just watch for how you word it to be the most unbiased you can. There's other things with bias I should just say and um, Tappan definitely will guide you to it as many other researchers will as well. But this is one way to look at bias in your problem statements and your um, purpose statements. Another thing that you want to explore is does your purpose statement fit where you're going to launch to next, you know, your research design. This is a little trickier to get into, but you can just kind of feel it as you go along and you can read about good fit. So your argument here, you know, your your problem and your purpose statement are kind of leading you to say, thus, we're going to do this kind of study. So uh, definitely Tappan and Hauser and other research texts will give you a good way to look at how you know, your, your research design fits well with your research question. Research question should really grow your research design. So if you, um, I've got another topic here, and you can see um, one statement says the purpose was to determine the direction and strength of the relationships between depression and independence. The other one says the purpose of the study was to measure the effects of depression. So one might be, um, if you were doing a quantitative correlational design, you can see relationships has more with correlations than just measuring the effects. So a good versus a bad fit is a little bit of a slippery thing, and you will come to that more in SQ, SQT2. But right now, it's something to just think about, to look at what you're saying. When you finally finish your, per your problem and your purpose and you say, okay, the purpose of this study is to determine what, it's going to lead you more to understanding what your design will be. But first, you have to get ready for your research questions. So uh, that will be another webinar. And um, thank you for turning into this one and hope it was helpful. Here's my data or my contact information, so please feel free to contact me. Thanks. Bye.